that is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high God. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, just at the break of dawn. The nations rage, the kingdoms will be removed. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with them, the God of Jacob is a refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He turns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. It is time in the joy of the Lord to sing this glorious hymn. To God be the glory. Hymn number four, please. To God. Be the glory, great things he has done. For long be the world that he gave us his son. Who is the life and atonement for sin? And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of love to every believer, the promise of God, the wireless friend who truly believes. That moment from Jesus a pardon received. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father. Through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has started, great things he has done, and great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son. Our glory and higher and greater will be. How wonders when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Let's go to the throne of grace. Glorious Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, 
we come into thy holy presence, merciful, gracious, loving, amazing, awesome presence. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself on the cross in great love, in great mercy, to redeem us from the powers of darkness. Yes, Lord, your son, death on the cross, has united us to the family of God. We have come to worship, adore you, magnify you, exalt you, glorify you. We have come to, O oh God, call upon you because you have done all things well. You have been our dove, our joy, in every sense of the term. There is nothing we lack. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Our God, over and beyond our expectations, our imaginations, our sufficiency is anything. You have done it all well. Lord God, we have come to tell you that we we'll love you, Lord. We know that you are a merciful God, a righteous God. And you want us to be cast in the beauty of Jesus. Oh, how we fall short of that. Lord, as we stand in thy holy presence, in thy righteous presence, we pray, Lord, that we look upon you and those wonderful children of you. They are precious to you, Lord. That's why you took the cross for us. We pray, Lord, that we come to the cross. Wash us, cleanse us in thy blood. Our thoughts, our demeanor, our attitude that has been displeasing to you. That they are changed. That doing, that witness. Lord God, we pray that we wash all those things and give us that health so as to look always looking into Jesus author and the finisher of our faith. Lord God, we thank you. When we cry out for mercy, you don't withhold forgiveness. We pray, Lord, that will help us not to repeat our sins, but to always proclaim the gospel of Christ and liberate the redeemed children of God. Lord God, we pray for our brethren in Christ Church, senators, congressmen, governors, and all the law people, law enforcement, blessing on them. We pray, Lord, for our armed personnel and teachers. They are everywhere in the world keeping peace. Oh, God, we pray that we protect and watch over them. We pray, Lord, on this day, last Sunday of the month of June, we pray, Lord, that we'll accept our gratitude for every meal we have, for the health we enjoy, the protection on the road we go. Lord God, we thank you, O oh God, that this glorious month of June when we planned it all, heard our cries for help to the revocation of our decision. Thank you, Lord, for glorifying the names of the souls who gave their life to Christ and blessing you to them. We pray for those free souls, Lord. We pray that these free will really somehow Word the Lord God much fruit for them. Yes, Lord, as the word says, our labor is not vain in the Lord. But those who go sowing in tears, the word says, will come rejoicing with a great harvest. Help us, Lord, to be mindful of your harvest field here and abroad. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence with world leaders, with persecuted Christians. Bible grant places. We pray for poor pastors, poor evangelists, and poor Christians who are struggling to make ends meet. Lord, we are blessed in India. Lord God, help us to be compassionate always. We pray, Master, for those in hospitals, those in homes for the aged, those who are bedridden, and those who are struggling, oh God, in so many ways, the homeless people. The widows, the widows and the orphans, children across the globe. Lord God, we pray that will somehow help us to be in some way a ministry of compassion to them. Lord God, we thank you again that thou will anoint us, conduct this worship service so that, Lord, it's all about you. As we reduce, you decrease. You increase. Lord God, we pray your beauty will be given to us. 
their life shine forth in our countenance. Lord, we thank you for the manifold blessings. Come, Lord, receive all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. It's a great joy to welcome each and every one of you to God's presence. It's amazing to know that God has shown and kept us the example of his life. Today is the last Sunday. We will not have Japa Gandhi to have the opportunity to bless his presence in this long service. What a wonderful week he is. We thank God for miraculous way God answered our prayer in the VBS. We have three souls, two young girls who are in youth class and one little girl. Two of them are from an Hindu background and one from a Christian background. Gave their life to Christ. What a blessed work the VBS is able to do. Very blessed. Thank you, Deepa, for coordinating everything and putting together. It was very hard. Also, the teachers and the helpers were hard. Other people did so many things. The people who took care of the snacks and the food, so many things. It's a lot of planning, a lot of praying. It couldn't have happened without all of us as a team working together. So now is the time to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, isn't it? In spirit and in truth, we worship the Lord. And it's not a performance the time where we all come together and God is very God. Shall we all stand and join our faithful singing? Good morning. So we welcome in the name of Jesus to this morning worship service. Um, so usually the last Sunday is Children's Sunday and children come here and do worship but you know we had a very busy week with VBS and children participating and all this all the teachers participating. I guess um, you all must be tired. But this today, I want to sing this song, Jump, Jump Into The Light. You all know this song. You can join and sing. Let's bring some energy here. I know you've been running, 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 you know, doing God's work through this week and giving glory to Him. You know, as Pastor said, that the impact that you made in children's life is tremendous. It is noted in heaven. And you have been a part of that story. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to sing the song. I want you to join and uh, give glory to God. Jump, jump, jump into the light, light. You saw the choir doing the actions. I never expected them to do, but good. They still have the energy after all a busy week. But it would be fitting to have the kids here on stage for just this song. Kids, do you want to quickly come on stage here for just this song and do the actions? Come on, guys. You can do much better. Come on, come on, come running to the stage. Come on, that's good. Yeah. We're going to do the actions and sing together. Carson, you want to join us? Good. Ready? 
I want, see this is not a performance we are going to watch. I want you to do the actions along. I want you to sing along, right? Everyone ready for it? Thank you, Mama. Everyone ready for it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jump, jump into the light, light, light. Everybody action. Run, run and do it on dry. Jump, jump, jump. Run to Jesus and give him your heart. One minute. Now you know the actions. Only you're going to do the actions. We're going to watch you. One, two, three, four. Jump, Let's go back. I think you should do just a chorus once more, a little faster. Jump, jump, jump into the light, light, light. offering to the Lord. Thank you, kids. You can go back. In the secret, in the quiet place, in the stillness you are in. In the secret, in the quiet only for you I want to know you more I want to know you I want to hear your voice I want to know you to touch you. 
Lord, this morning, this is our desire to know you more, to hear your voice. I want to touch you. I want to see your face, oh God. I want to feel your mighty presence this morning. Pressing onward, pushing every hindrance aside, out of my way. Everything that would stop me from giving my 100% to you. This morning, I want to surrender. I want to say, Lord, I want you. I want to enjoy your presence more. You are more than anything to me, Lord. You mean the world to me. It's my unique privilege this morning to come and worship you, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Jesus, I worship you. I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. that this morning. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I will never speak within the I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark prediction starts to rain. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Jesus. 
the awesome name the powerful name the wonderful name the matchless name the name of jesus the devil trembles every knee will bow every tongue will confess the whole world will know that jesus christ is lord we have jesus we have everything we don't have jesus we might have everything but we don't have jesus even today the lord wants us to know how powerful is his name and what it can do to your life and my life when we utter the name of jesus there is power every addiction is removed every captivity is gone every sickness is healed hallelujah can i hear the name of jesus this morning say jesus 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 hallelujah i just want to speak the name of jesus by depression I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Break every stronghold Shine through the shadow Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Everybody together shout Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus One last time can we shout Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Your name is Father Your name is Your name is love. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. My life is gone. Father, I pray that you will burn like a fire of fire. Father, I pray that your mighty presence, the presence of the Almighty God, the Holy Spirit, I pray oh father that your spirit would just move over this place. We know your mighty presence is here this morning. Hallelujah, you're doing your work this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you'll open the door of our heart for you to come. Every obstacle, every hindrance we set aside. We want more of you, Jesus. We want more of you. We want more of you.
name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you let each of us fall on our knees right now. You told us, Father, that this is not by chance that we are here this night. Lord, you know and you've known us, Lord, even before we were conceived in our mother's womb, Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, that that you touch us, Father, Lord, that we invite you in our hearts this morning, Father, Lord. 
we pray that you'll transform us, Lord. Lord, you'll transform us being, Lord. You'll transform our character, Lord. You'll transform our souls, Father, Lord, for your glory, Lord. You'll, I pray this morning, Father, Lord, that you'll touch, Lord, each and every person here, Father, Lord. I speak Jesus on the congregation this morning, Father, Lord. I pray, Father, Lord, that everybody, Lord, will get a chance to experience you, Father, Lord, and to taste you, oh, Father, Lord, and be transformed by your love. We thank you, Father. We pray for your anointing upon Pastor Joe as he brings your message to us, Lord. Open our hearts and minds, Father, that we may understand your word, Father, Lord, and we may be able to internalize and experience your love and truth. In Jesus' name, Father. Let's turn to John chapter 6. Through 14. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. When a great multitude followed him, because they saw his sign, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there was he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes. And seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, make the people sit down. And there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number in about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to his disciples. And the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered up them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments, fragments of five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. But those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, It is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Please be seated. And today, as ever, I think I'll never get tired of preaching. Jehovah Jireh has been my life story and has been the story of this ministry. You can see in the bulletin, I always put Jehovah Jireh provides sanctuary. Because my heart says, don't forget, don't forget. You know, that's why I put it. I hope it happens. After my time, people should never forget the sanctuary was given by God. So it's very important. This topic has a lot of meaning. I appeal to all of you with personal ways you can answer your question. Jehovah Jireh is my God too. Uh, it's a very important one because both these passages, both from the Old and the New Testament, they are very complementing to each other. And you know that, a lot of you know very well, you know, so any book can give you that, you know, any any commentary can give you any, anywhere, the Jehovah Jireh simply means the one who provides. It'll be done. God says, don't worry, it will be given. I'll take care of it. That's what God says. Feverish mind, humans, but they are going a little farther from Christ, a little farther and farther away, anxiety is set. A proof of anxiety is I'm a little far away from my God. I'm giving you a proof. If you're anxious mind, go back and run to God and say, God, where am I? Let me get back to you. Closer to Christ, my God. It's like a kid, closer to mommy. No fear. Farther from mommy, the kid is suddenly looking for mommy. They're playing very well. Suddenly they look because they want a mummy face, a daddy's face, isn't it? 
The same goes with our relationship with our Heavenly Father. We are closer to Him, less anxiety, less panic, less worry, less mind working. You know, the mind gets very you know, feverish. But we are closer to God. We know that He is in charge. He will provide. Jehovah Jireh, God, God provider. Remember, uh, that is from Genesis chapter 22, verse 13. Uh, remember uh, Abraham, God promised him, he got out. When he was 75 years old, now I'm going to be 72 in August, you know. And he was 75 when God told him, leave and follow me, you know. Age is no barrier. When God calls, he'll give strength and energy. Till the last moment, he'll, there will be energy, motivation, and strength to keep doing it. So God called him and he left. After 25 years, he gave him a son, Isaac. 25 years waiting. Many of us cannot wait. I cannot. But we all are lear learning to wait. Because God has the best for those who wait. Many, many blessings. So finally, when his son is a teenage fellow, a grown up 12 year old fellow, that age of accountability in the Eastern culture. When a man can say, he's a young fellow, he can say, I want, I don't want. He makes many decisions, the age of accountability. He takes him, God says, take your only son, I promise, and then take him to Mount Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice to me. Abraham already has seen God at work in his body, in his family, and he has known that God could do anything. That's called track record. You know, you don't need to worry. Once God has given one little help, you can go for him for more help. I never, never ever hesitated about going to God. He has given me, he'll take care of me for this need also. You know, I had a, a concern of my stomach, you know, swelling up and this all here and there. So, Dr. Duckett usually sees me before I leave for Africa trip or India trip. He wants to see me to make sure I'm good enough to go. If the horse is good enough for the travel, so he will check me everywhere. And, and then he, he's a, a doctor is never panicky. He always looks at me, you are good. What is it you oh, He tested me. And he said, Let, come, let's do a, what is it? Mitch pylori test. And we have to go with our food early morning and then grow into two balloons. You know. And they give a second balloon something to drink, you wait for 15 minutes, and then you blow again. Then he calls me, calmly. I did this on Wednesday. He calls me on Friday, says, Mr. Jesse Dawson, it's all negative. Stay out of Brussels sprout, cabbage, brinjal. You know. I like brinjal. Stay out of them. And then stay out of this beans, that beans. These are not good stuff. Use a lot of ginger. Immediately I told my wife, I want more ginger in my life. I had to immediately. You know, ginger is good, right? I think all of us use, right? I know Dr. Gisral used to like ginger a lot. Manmohan used to say, oh, he wants ginger all the time. So. That's what he said. Use more fresh ginger. You'll be all right. You're good to go. Everything is good. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you when you come back. And he always says, what you're doing, I wish I could do, but I'm tied up here. We thank and praise God for the help God has given all of us. And to me, he's my Jehovah Jehovah, isn't it? God gives us help, and we enjoy his help so that we do it. Also, the AC matter, we kept praying, all of you kept praying, and then I kept calling every day, Dave Hawkins, so what's going on in the sanctuary? Every other week is going on. Finally, he said, Pastor, I have an early morning, good news, but come today. And Josh came and went on, uh, real hot, that man, and then bypassed, and then put the AC motor on, but the other variation, frequency adjusting, then he kept on the way. But we thank God for that answer to prayer. It is now on now here in the sanctuary. And we thank God for those messengers in and gone. We'll be bringing God's message. It's all planned. You know, like 
we plan a lot with the prayer in the church. Nothing happens haphazard here. It's all planned. Everybody knows that. I usually print all my bulletins before I leave, even five weeks of bulletin. But this time, Vinay said, Pastor, you go also for printing your bulletin. You have a nice machine here. I'm folding machine, everything is here. So he said, you can go, and I will leave. I had my cup, and <laughs> in week, last week, somewhere I had a call from my niece at Yale University. They were on, she called the early morning on Thursday. She said, because I switch off my phone, downstairs, I don't take my phone near my bed. I don't need that half the time. She has the phone. She called her and I told her, Sandhya Mama is coming to you. Think so. She might have had a bad experience. Only God knows. My brother is old, seven years older than me. I stayed in his house in Madras, Kosovo area. 1969 to 1972, I did my bachelor's at Loyola College. Jesuit family, and he accommodated me, gave me food and shelter. How can you forget him? Loving brother. And uh, then I went to, uh, after my graduation, to Benghazi for my mas master's. Then on, so I was a vagabond in Germany. I worked in Congo doing that work. Then on to, to Kenya. Then my brother was working for a central government. Fast reaper. And I kept on telling about the great things I had worked in as a teacher in Kenya. I didn't tell him all the hardships I was going through without electricity, without potable water, no hospital nearby. You know. And I told him I enjoy teaching that. He was attracted to his younger brother, he believed. Anyway, he wanted to come and teach, so I brought him to Kenya. And he was there over 28 some years, became a Kenyan citizen. Then afterwards, he said, he's a basketball coach, a basketball player. He captained Ben Gersh's basketball team and then university at Madras he played. Very great basketball player, my older brother. And very athletic fellow. And he came and taught 10 years in Palestine in the teaching school. Then afterwards, he went to Madras and he was the managing director of private very expensive school, retired and physics and mathematics teacher. And first thing, what he did was, he just took the scooter by himself. Two days he had dehydrated badly. He told his wife, I'm going to the hospital. Took his scooter, went by himself to the hospital, checked in. Two hours he was gone. That's it. See, this is the, the real hard at a teacher teacher. They don't want any help from anybody. They are dependent, self-dependent people. Never make fuss. Of my mommy says, don't fuss about your health. My grandfather said, don't make, pet your fever. So, gone deep inside. We don't need attention. We can live by ourselves. But my son thought he went to be with the Lord. Two hours he went, checked in, gone. And then he, he told his wife, I'll do all right. He departed. And then next day, 24 hours, he was buried in Mandavali, St. Mary's Church, where they give praise for him. So quick. I had to keep going for him. Okay. Preparing messages and things, preparing things in Kenya, and keeping a cool, calm, never let it bother me. His ministry is never stopped. It's not about me. I take my grief uh, over to the feet of Christ and say, Lord, what's the plan and the purpose for him to be? Last year, my sister left, youngest sister, baby, Nirmala. And this year, while I was getting ready to pray, do one for men with this job. So life goes on. We serve a living God, loving God, who is the all provider of peace that passes all understanding. Jehovah Rapha is our healer, and Jehovah Nisi is our banner, you can see it, and the Lord God Shalom is our peace. And though he is our shepherd and Christian, he is our righteousness. Shama is his joy, he is here. Shama is here. 
Let's say this uh, wonderful people, a lot of churches, there were Shama churches in Hyderabad. Many, many of them, there were Shama churches. Wonderful man of God. And there were Mikhadesh, Radhu, Shantideva, Radhu, Koli. We are going to see how God took care of the children of Israel in the wilderness when he gave them, brought them out with a heavy hand from 400 years of slavery. He yanked them out with freedom and liberty and joy. He gave them spiritual blessings during those 400 years. And then with the spiritual blessing, he took them out for physical blessings. Remember all this, there was Java refers to spiritual blessings. They were not physical blessings. A lot of us, uh, we think there were, you know, Java means my physical prayer. No, no, please. The first thing he provides is with his love, with his blessings, with his joy, with his peace. He is the, the provider of all this. And then he provides us our emotion, his physical needs our immigration needs, our jobs, and every bit of it he provides. It's an amazing God. So he took them out of Egypt and, and made sure Egyptian, when they were acting funny and tough Pharaoh, he had reason. Because if they are gone, no labor. That's it. It will be very difficult. Kingdom will collapse. But he hit them with the ten plagues and liberated the children of Israel. And then made them to cross the Red Sea on dry path. The Epstein army. There was Java. Wonder working miracle. And now they are in the wilderness journey. He kept taking care of them. I always tell some uh, poor people, you know, when I go to missions, I'm not interested in food at all. Somehow I pray to God, Lord, take care of this instinct of hunger and thirst. Forget it. It never let me. I don't run for food. I enjoy food, company. Food is an excuse for me. The company, we are tight company, huge family, a lot of children, eight children, so many people are wrapped in it, nine. I like company, talking and laughing and humor, you know. And then here comes the limited food and we enjoy it. Again, I come from a very humble, ordinary family, not a very rich family. But all of us got educated by mom and dad were teachers. So I never forget my roots and where I came. And I don't want to say by grace that they should never forget their humble roots. It should not be our ignorance and no way. Ignorance is a lot of God. Mighty God we serve. So he brought them and they come to wilderness and they had one target always, Moses. They wanted to hit him, hit him, hit him. Because there was a mixed crowd within the children of Israel. You read that. Please. One you know that uh, the King uh, Solomon said that one dead fly will send out a foul smell in a bottle of perfume. One bad element is enough for the church to have a headache. You know? So there is a mixed crowd that is always stirring up the people. And they kept on forgetting the provision of God's presence. Best of all, God was watching over them. When the sun was hot, he made it cool by the cloud. And when the sun went down, he gave pillar of fire so that they'll be warm and it won't be cold. Isn't it? Every congregation, every church will have some difficult people. I hope not. None of us will be a difficult person to the vision, mission of God in our life. They will say, it's not about me, it's about Jesus. All persons are the sons of God, isn't it? It's all about Jesus, not about you. And every church person knows very well, God is the center of this church. ICC belongs to Jesus. My wife and I constantly felt this pressure. This church is not ours. The last church, the time will come, we'll have to leave. So we don't have a possessive nature about this church. We don't put ourselves as a boss or anything. But we give leadership, clear leadership, in the name of the Lord. Where there is correction to be given, we talk straight. We don't go to this person, but straight, one-on-one, -on -one, we deal with people. That's one of the hallmarks of Jezebel and Ahab, isn't it? We don't fear, man. We talk straight. And we thank God for that. Moses, 
talk to God, as a friend talk to God. And he was always giving the best for the children of Israel. But they had one target, Moses. Oh, wish we had been to Egypt. We would have had meat. We would have garlic. We would have all the lovely food. We are now starving as if. But God gave them quail for meat and manna for bread. When he said, I am the bread of life, and he asked, and the word of God says what? Man shall not live by bread of life. You know, this whole demon of gluttony is going to eat up. Man shall not live by bread of life. Not eating that makes you and I a Christian. No. It is Jesus present that makes it all. You know, have you seen? I always pray at the home team we dedicate. Bless the water and the bread of this world. So that your, your food is not in tears, not in agony, not in arguments, not in fighting. Your food is taken in peace and quiet. And also there will be more people served when they come to your home. It's a blessing. That's what God, God gave them all the blessings, but they kept murmuring. You know, am I perfect? No, I'm not. You can find so many faults of that man. You know, everything about that place is perfect. But why would we have a murmuring spirit? What the children of Israel had? False finding spirit. Bitter spirit. <laughs> Dangerous. You can say, no, I'm no imperfect, so you God of us is perfect, but we have a perfect savior. Let's get along as family of God, isn't it? Then we're in trouble. So the children of Israel murmured a lot. And they displeased God constantly. And so Moses will run to God. And he'll fall at the face, on his face to God, along with his older brother Aaron. And God will tell them what to do. You know, the same God is my God and your God. You know, when God gives you a vision, he gives you direction, directives, provision, protection, everything. I, I, I'm speaking from experience. Be it in India, the toughest medical mission we conducted was in Karnataka, outside Hubli. Five, still six days of each day, one, one village. Toughest one, because one village was happened to all Muslims. Anybody you turn is Muslim. The rest of five days, all Hindus. And we had a tough time because nobody wanted us. But then I kept behind the Paul Buraga, you know. Elizabeth and Natasha, his son, and their television people, wonderful people. I love them. You know, wonderful people. You know, we went to be with the Lord, Pastor Joseph and his wife. We had a tough time because nobody, they'll come and test the tablets whether they are real good tablets. Really, correct? Come on, okay. Whether they are cheap tablets or real good tablets. We had to go through India, that's the toughest medical. Kenya, wonderful people. No problem at all, isn't it? People are without any problem. Nobody will come and test and see what tablet you are using. It's amazing. So God gave them everything he wanted, but then they had this spirit of finding fault. It's not enough. It's not right. That's not enough. This is not right. Wait. But God, for all that God had done for them, they began to look at Moses as a mere man, began to see dissatisfaction setting itself up. I'm never satisfied as a human, I know. But godliness, it, contentment is a great virtue. It says the word of God. If you are a satisfied person, you have got a big blessing going for you. You have nothing lacking. So God blessed them and he gave them food so that they're wondering what is this food. He gave them angel food, manna, and he gave them meat. And he also told them, there's a limit. I will not supply your greed. They could not collect more. You know, they could not collect. He gave them exact what they needed. So, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, is a great message for every family man of God. If you're ahead of the family, always keep on saying Jehovah Jireh will not lack anything. If you are a man leading your family, your watchword should be Jehovah's Jireh.
will give you wisdom, will give you peace, will give you calmness, will give you stillness, will give you immigration, he will give you health, he will give you everything. He will give you himself. And going to the mirror passage, here is the Lord, just around Passover time. Look at it, what a beautiful, you know, reflection of it. He's recalling the Exodus time when he fed the multitude in the wilderness. Now there is a small multitude in this part of the Sea of Galilee. It's a beautiful spot. There are a lot of miraculous feeding of 5,000. He's recorded in all four Gospels. Our Lord went over to Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, also known as Gennesaret. A great multitude followed him because they saw all the signs he did. The Word of God says, because they saw the signs, his signs, which he performed on those who were believing. That was the only reason they saw. The, 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 the God, the Son of God, the Messiah was with them. Oh, how often they look to God for various reasons. People are attracted, right, to Jesus for various reasons. I don't know what reason Jesus is attracted to you, you know. People are still today, they have own reasons, agenda, as far as Jesus is concerned. Our Lord Jesus, even today, will be forever, has a very gripping and appealing his personality of love, compassion, mercy, power, and force. Magnetic against our Lord Jesus. So he had eyes of compassion, but they were looking for some miracles to happen, disease to be healed, demons to be cast out, and, you know, all those things. So here is a time, just before Passover, in a location far away from the city of Jerusalem. You know, here are people, bunch of people, lots of people, multitude. They are following Jesus. He has given them good teaching, and uh, there they are looking tired and exhausted, and almost a lot of them looking not good. So he knew that he, he needed food to be given to them. A lot continues to appeal to people of diverse walks of life. He attacks people of all cultures and all ages, and best of all, to all little children. Jesus is the ultimate personality of love and tenderness. Look at the way our VBS children respond to Jesus. Totally different, you know, from you know, Matthew 19, 14. Suffer the little children. Allah, permit the little children to come to me, and do not stop them, forbid them. For such is the kingdom of heaven. How come adults are not attracted as much as children? I wonder why. I will ask the wonder, isn't it? Amazing children. Probably we have become complex and sophisticated in our thinking process. Isn't it? Is it true? Some of us are very complex and sophisticated people. That simplicity is gone from us. Why don't you retain that childlike simplicity? Even Jesus put a child in there. Unless you become like this, you know, it's amazing. The Galilee region is located north of Judea and deserts. Springtime in Galilee is gorgeous, full of grass, covered with beautiful wild plants like yellow daisies, red and white uh, lupines, proteas, and uh, purple aninomates, all kinds of. It's just a lovely place to see. A lot of grass. G gentle breeze blew over them, and it has to be one of the most beautiful places for one to sit down and have rest and meal, especially. Passover feast was just around the corner. Perhaps this great multitude was on their way to this pilgrimage from Galilean place to Jerusalem. Passover reminds us of the great exodus of the children of Israel from the Egyptian slavery and God's marvelous and historical testament of the children of Israel in the wilderness. God knows the way through the wilderness. You know that song that comes in my heart to me? See, as I was preparing the message, Sunday night, I knew I should sing. What is that song? Together I shall night for that. His grace is sufficient. Isn't it? What a lovely song. It's a beautiful song. Sit down waiting at your bed, keep humming it to yourself. The flight delays will be taken care. It won't, don't look at the screen always. Cancel, delays. Forget it. I'm going with my wife. She's a meticulous lady. Everything has to be planned. Totally different personality. Totally different. 
last minute backing to everything. <laughs> but she planned, planned everything. I was going with the Lord Lee. I think she was my friend. And uh, I'm Tom Lee's mom. So she's not that she's not normal. She likes everything. She likes food together. I mean, food and drink. Food and drink. That's why. That's good food. Because you can eat all over. You don't see me. You need to walk. Everything. She's a scientist. She's a teacher. Precisely about many things. Which is good. I like that. Good. But here is something. A beautiful place. Passover reminds us of the great exodus of the sin of Israel. God was there moment by moment providing. Is he not? Yes. He provides you more than enough. Breath in your nostrils. Every bit he provides. He can do it. What a way he can be gracious. He met all the needs, spiritual, the physical, every need he met. He gave them his presence through the cloud of pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. He gave them his presence by talking with Moses. What else they needed? He gave them a chosen prophet, leader, Moses, the lawgiver to the nation of Israel. They were never learned. The nation of Israel had a very short memory and kept forgetting all the miracles and signs that the Lord God had brought about, liberate guides and heaven come. Amen. Do you have a track record of all the blessings? Before your marriage, how you got married, how God brought you to this country. Do you have a track record? You go around and see things sometimes and think about all the blessings. You'll be a better Christian. I'll be a better Christian. Amen. It's good to talk, recall from the other things how God has sustained us. Amen. Every time we forget the shortness of gratitude and short memory, go into this vicious Demonic circle of complain, complain, fault finding and all those things. Amen. What a great God he has brought me this far. He has helped me thus far. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will help. Exodus 16, 2, 3. But the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate the bread to the full. For you brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with the hunger. Isn't it? Look at it. And Exodus 16, 4 and 5 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Has he not done to you? Given you all your food. Could never say, Oh, I was hungry, I didn't eat my food or drink. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. So, every provision of God, God gives me. I know God is testing my grateful heart. Isn't it? Or am I taking for granted, Oh, my meal is there, I have a lot of money, I can buy what I want. I get into a problem. You know? I'd say, I always think about from what family I came from, where I came from. Every meal, I'm saying this for a fact. Whether it's breakfast or lunch or dinner, George Jesse Dawson will always recall. I was talking with my younger brother David the other day, just before, you know, a couple of days ago. We both were talking, and literally laughing and crying to ourselves how God has brought us so far. Amen. Every meal, is a given meal from God Almighty. That's why I'm, I say this. This topic is dear to my heart. I never ever say this. It's just saying. It's from my inmost being I'm saying. You know? And these children of Israel, you know, they had enough food. You know, the Lord gave them plenty of food. Lack of faith combined with ingratitude to lead a precious child of God to complain and murmur. You know where it comes from? This is it. Lack of faith and gratitude. Will straight take me to the path of bitterness, complaint, murmur, fault finding, all those dissatisfaction, everything. Unknowingly, they get played by Satan 
who is the author of all forms of unbelief, ingratitude, murmur, complaint, dissatisfaction, and disunity. Moses took the right approach. What, what was his approach? The path of faith. That's it. He always cried out to God, Jehovah Jireh, and simply obey his directive. He'll go to God. He'll never say, oh, you people go and do this. No. He'll just run to God. The children of Israel had forgotten their Egyptian bondage, the cruel treatments, and the misery of their forced labor as slaves with no freedom, even to express their thought against their slave masters. They kept on accusing Moses and Aaron, of course God, for deliberately leading them into the wilderness to have them all killed. Look at all the charges. Oh, you brought us to be killed here. You think God was not listening? God was listening. God heard their cravings and complaints, and in his love and mercy met the need for bread, manna of bread from heaven, food of angels, even water from the rock. You see that in the next chapter. And meat, he gave everything. Let us listen to the words of Moses. For the Lord hears your complaints, which you make against him. In every church, in every family, complainants need to be strictly told, the Lord hears your complaints. The Lord hears your complaints. In every church, in every family, may be strictly told, the Lord hears your complaints. We have to be very careful how we do these things. Every place that God has blessed, there should be a place of gratitude. The Lord hears your complaints which you make against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. Very important that we teach our children to stop being complainers and to be grateful. Very important. We teach our children strictly. We say, no, don't complain. Oh, mommy, why is the same food? Tell them, stop complaining. Tell them to be grateful for what God has provided. Help them to say thank you, God. God knows and sees all our smartphone texts, including our complaints and fault finding. God, you think God is not seeing? He sees it. He sees my text to this person. He sees your text to that person. Be very careful how you use these smartphones. There could be a headache for you if you are not careful, isn't it? Have a limited use for it to convey nothing but the good news of God. You know, God sees all our smartphone texts. They had forgotten that the greatest gift of the Jehovah Jireh was their spiritual liberty, and God's presence was ever present with them to provide and meet all their needs, including their cravings. And yet for all the blessings from God, they chose to live in misery. God's spirit was grieved. You know, I choose in my own misery. I can't. Complain, God, my wife, my anybody. We choose a life of joy or misery. It's our own choice. When God grants, provides these precious children with his own unfailing, powerful presence and the provision of his love, his peace, his joy, his faith, his hope, it's imperative that God's children reflect those blessings and never project the spirit of dissatisfaction. Moses refused to join those negative spirits chronic complainers. Yeah, he could have. Majority was crying. He could have. Yeah, I don't know why God is doing this way. I wish he had done it that way. No, not necessary. Moses always went God's way. Quite often, Moses stood alone. Quite often, it is that way for you. If you're a child of God, serious about God, you may be a lonely person at times because you are listening to God and not to the surroundings. You are not reacting to God gave sustenance to this multitude in the wilderness. And now our Lord Jesus is about to give sustenance to this multitude, this so-called wilderness, deserted place. You remember that? The disciples gave their own solution. They are coming to them with bread from heaven, both literally and spiritually. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Our Lord lifted up his eyes and saw a great multitude coming toward him, not towards the disciples. Our Lord knew their physical needs at this point and also knew that the means to provide their needs for bread. But he also took this occasion to test the faith of his disciples. At the same time, he wanted to test their faith and raise their faith in him 
in the real Java child. So he said to Philip, you know, before he said to Philip, if you go to Matthew and Mark and Luke, if you read them all, disciples first said, send them on. It's a deserted place, getting light, the sun is going down. Look at it, disciples are now giving big advice to our Lord Jesus. Send them away. That is our solution. Send them away. And Jesus looks at uh, Philip, he's a native of Bethsaida. You know, God called, Jesus calls a couple of cities. Horizon, Horizon, you know that? He calls to Bethsaida, no more. They are digging up to see what is down there today in archaeology. It's all gone, cursed, completely gone, you know. And so he's from Bethsaida. He's from that area. The fellow was from that area. So he told Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? He knew where he's going to get bread, but he wanted to see Philip. Philip said, oh, even if you have this much of money, he does have you know, financial calculator. Like, uh, you know, some people are very financially calculated. You calculate, oh, this has to be this. You know, God doesn't deal always that way. Yeah, you need to have finances. You need to have calculation. Nothing wrong with that. But if you are extremely, you know, tight on it, it's not what the Bible says. I don't read that. You know. God is above all laws and laws. Calculation, physical calculation. You know that? Such is our God. Our times is, how are we going to? My mommy and daddy had many times. How are we going to manage? How do you manage it? God gave them. Poor teachers, you know. Those days in the 60s, in the 50s, salaries were what? 150 rupees, 200 rupees. Folks, I'm making a very gripping message to you. Quite often we just wonder, how are we going to make it? Is there not a Jehovah just to love my mommy and daddy? Went to the Lord. We never have to put our hand to this person. No borrowing business to here and there. No. It's a poor testimony. Go to the Lord. Jehovah Jireh. And he will supply all your needs. You know, Moses, did he go? Say, did Jesus say, well, go, fellas, find your friends in Bethsaida. You're from Philip. He said, how are we going to get them? You could have said, go get your friends and go find out some fellas who are bakers here and there, get see if you can. No, he just wanted to assist. We have that faith in Jehovah Jireh. It's not enough to sing. It's not enough to say. You have to live it. When you stand, people should say, that fellow is a Jehovah Jireh symbol. You know, that's the word of God. You know, your children are watching. David Gade is watching Sharath and China and uh, the Sony. Mommy and daddy always cried out to God. I love Sharath for many reasons. Our church is blessed. The man always went through lots of difficulties. But he always was a calm fellow with his wife. I always look to God. He never came to me and said, Pastor, give me some money. Never. He came and said, ask me for money. He went to God. I'm speaking with the powerful voice of God. We have people who are seated. Jehovah Jireh people. I thank and praise God for that. So here, Moses stood. He cried to God. Lord God, help me. And here Jesus is telling Philip, what did she give them? And Philip is telling, listen, there's no money. No money. You know, I thank God for Vinay and Jagrat Swami. Spiritual men, they don't talk about we don't have money. They always say, we will have a wonderful time with you. Because in the spiritual, we don't have money to talk about. Always. That's the way it is. They don't make calculations and say, Oh, we cannot do this. No, I never heard from uh, my treasurer. Go, Pastor. God will provide. That's what Vinay said. God will provide. We'll have, we'll have enough. You know, I send messages. Yes, oh, yes. He will send some money, even. <laughs> and he will send it. You know, because I'm in the field in India or in especially Kenya. Some need coming up. Unexpected need coming up. You know. Incidentally, we thank and praise God. God is able, as he has always done, he knows where to pull the rabbit out of the hat. And 
that's not to happen. I have never had a hesitation going on a mission trip with my Lord Jesus. Not because I have a plastic covenant. Because I go in the name of the Lord. You know. Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? Oh, how he is asking you the same question. You know, our God never forgets our physical need and will always provide for us. John 6.6, 6, but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. I love this passage. I love this passage. Oh, what peace we often go through. Because we forget that Jesus Christ himself knows what he would do to meet all our needs. You know, I know this. God cannot have a child who has lacked anything. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Josh, uh, Psalm 34, 10, the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack anything. Is it written or it should be tore up and thrown away? You know, it's written for us to personalize it, internalize it, and live it. You know, our God is Jehovah Jireh. What a hope, what a wonderful peace we can have. My Lord knows the ways to the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow, you know. Quite often, I walk that path. More than me, my wife has walked that path. What is cancer? What is it going to do? No. Just depend upon the Lord. The Lord will provide healing. The Lord will provide it. Isn't it? What a marvelous God. I always a living symbol of having gone through the valley of the shadow of death. We never run into panic situations, to this corner, to that corner, to this internet, to that. No. We went only to the Lord, like Moses did. You know, that's what the lesson is very important. You know, God constantly tests our faith. And for good reasons, remember, untested faith is inactive faith and undependable faith. God cannot use it. This church will not benefit. Your family will not benefit. Your neighborhood will not benefit unless you have a tested faith about God. Our Lord asked this question to Philip because he was from Bethsaida. And you, I have this reference in John chapter 10, verse 10. And this was very close to the miracle that took place in this place. Philip had already witnessed with his own eyes all the miracles Jesus did and also his words and that produced faith and that should have been no question in his mind for what he can do. He had seen what had turned into wine in Cana at wedding, isn't it? He had seen it. But all forgotten. The children of Israel forgot all the ten plagues, the, the dry path under it, all forgot. We are the same. We have the same tendency to forget this God. The message is, wake up. Put all your weight upon Jehovah Jireh. He won't let you down. You know, he's in the, oh, what will happen? I, I need this. I need. Leave it to him. He'll do a good job. You know, Philip, how can we get to him? Philip had already witnessed, but it wouldn't do. He would come down. He began to make financial calculations like any other human being, and his conclusion was that it's not possible. He's telling Jesus, don't you ever think about this mission, what you're trying to do, feed the people. Forget about this mission. It's not going to work. Just listen to them. My buddy is telling, let them hope. In other words, you know, this mission is impossible, you know. Not possible. Hey, we don't have money. Is it about you or is it about God when it comes to provision? Who has every mean, the resource? God has it. He gave no room for faith in the provider who was standing right in front of him. Whereas the other disciples suggested that Jesus Christ just send the hungry people away. They'll faint. Jesus already said, they'll faint on the way if you don't send them without food. But they said, anyway you send them. Self-centered disciple at this time who refused excess faith. 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little bite of that. He was saying that they didn't have the financial resources and money would be insufficient to buy bread at all. The church is a living testimony. You know, there are some people who say, oh, we cannot buy this building. It's too much. We can't. It's too much. They didn't show up. For the signing time, God told me, way before, who will come, who will come. You know, I get vision. I get 
clear voices of God. Say, yes, Lord, I'll go. I don't want to be very famous, you know. Say, no, you cannot. There's too much. Oh, this church, that one church, oh, God. God looked daily at his disciples, and he knew that what was going on. He had compassion on the disciples. He wanted them to know, let them go with him. You see, have you been in this part where you make your financial calculation? Where you make all your financial calculations? Who this money goes to? I don't like making it to myself in that way. I just say that you have set this at this. You know, have you not known that your God is an unlimited God, your eternal Jehovah Jireh? I talk to sometimes to various pastors. I pass to Janet. Always when I talk to her, she says, Pastor, go. My God is an unlimited God. Hey, Pastor, unlimited. I gave her nickname. She used to laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. Unlimited. My God is unlimited. She says, you, you won't say, yesterday I gave you this. Why are you coming today again? <laughs> you go back to him. It's like going back to your cow to milk. You can go back. You are shot, you know. But God will never fail. You know, it's an amazing. Philip's knowledge of the needful money was impressive, but inadequate as far as the faith is concerned, the situation was. Human calculations fail and fall flat in the presence of our Jehovah Jireh. And when we use our faith in Jesus, he most certainly will honor our faith. As rue is reaped, he will not break, and the smoking flax he will not quench, you know. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God will provide. What an amazing God we have, and what a patient teacher in Jesus we have as we face tough situations in life. You know, my brother went to be with the Lord this past week, just, just like that. Think about your life, my friend. It's not in your hands. Jehovah Jireh will provide every protection for you, every provision for you. Philip thought in terms of money, and how much money would take you to do God's ministry. But our God took a completely radical faith-based approach to this situation and provided in a big way. That's why when God's children ungrudgingly give to money, unquestioningly give to money, you know what happens? God opens the windows of heaven, not window of heaven. Windows of heaven, he pulls out a blessing, there's no room enough for you. There are some people calculate you give us. Oh, I gave this, how can I give this? Whereas the Bible says, what do you have that is not given to you by God? Isn't it? There's nothing I have that is not given by God. Everything God gives to them. He wants it all. I give in Chronicles, it says, all that we have comes from your hand. Only from your hand we have taken it. Isn't it? All that we have, only with your hand we have taken it. McLaren is a great uh, Bible teacher. He says Philip was a man of figures. He believed in what could be put to into the tables and pens. You know, I'm not into this financial gurus, even if they are evangelical people. You know, I believe in the word of God. It gives all wisdom for finances. Yes, unlike a great man, other people of his thought, he left out one small element in his calculation, and that was Jesus Christ. And so his answer went creeping along the lowly. Very clearly he says, Philip, all he said was, leave me, forget money. Oh, this much money. That's it. It all depends on where our focus is as we face our needs in life. The disciples looked at their own adequacies, abilities, completely leaving out Jesus Christ in their calculation. We could have easily fed them all. Luke 137, God all things. God all things, isn't it? With God all things, will your answer be like Philip's? That even eight months of wages would not be enough to give each person even one bite of bread. The third solution came from Andrew. First, disciples, send them all away. Second, Philip, no, money is not going to be enough. Send them. Third solution came from Andrew, Peter's brother, but he was not quite sure how the need for bread for the multitude would be met. He found a lad, a little boy, like Zach, like uh, Shrey, like David Gade. He found a little fellow, 
who had been given by his poor mother. You know, barley is a bread for, uh, they make bread out of barley. We, very, very poor people eat barley. It's for poor man to chew, you know. It's not, a, a lot of people will eat from wheat bread, you know. So he had five barley loaves, what a blessed man, and two small fish. He put in between the fish and then relish it in between, like that he eat. And you could have recalled the miracle at the wedding of Cana, but he also said, but what this food is going to be? It's not enough. How could he feed it with all this? And completely out of faith. You know, it could happen in every church. Even deacons could be out of faith. Even pastor could be out of faith. It's a danger sign when we are calling Jehovah Jehovah. We should never be out of fuel, people. We should always say, well, if God, if this is God's vision, he will provide. That should be the sound resounding in this place as ever. You know? Again and again, they kept their eyes on the big multitude of people and the problem, the impossibility of feeding them. They kept focusing on human adequacy. Remember, barley cakes, bread, were consumed by the poor of the society, whereas wheat was used for bread by those a little better off and others. God looked at it, and Andrew is telling, oh, what is this going to mean? Andrew felt that the food of the little boy sacrificially willingly gave to Jesus, he never withheld. Blessed is that parent who gave that fellow that heart to give away everything. He didn't say it's mine. Children, have you noticed in the fast food place we take them? We take one French fry from them, they immediately put it in their mouth. It's mine. Is that right, young boy? Huh? <laughs> We're joking. We'll do everything to you. Know? But when I am there, I give a stern look. Everything for a mother on the table. No fighting to it. And that was a God is kind. But he's a good example to this. I remembered when I was tiny. It was mine. I would say, let go of one. <laughs> huh? So what to do? The boy was so good, like Ayan, giving away all his Is that right, Ayan? When pastor asked, no, pastor, not at all. Yes, yes. Parents are good parents, like all you parents. Harvey and Haley, all. They'll give away. Again and again, they kept all their eyes on the big multitude. And anyway, the boy gave away everything. The land who looked so aghast, no, no interest at all. And everybody looking depressed, the disciples. They were out of focus with Jehovah Jireh right in front of them. Bali was always regarded as food for fit for animals than for people. This means it is likely that the little boy came from a very poor family. The Talmud has a passage where one man said, there's a fine crop of barley. Another man answered, sell it to the horses and the donkeys. They're the ones who will be consuming it, not human beings. <laughs> what are they among so many? <laughs> and who gave also an answer. There was not much work to work with, but our Jehovah Jaira does not need much to work with. He needs willing people, willing people. That's all he needs. Are you a willing person? You know? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is the air heavy that it cannot kill. Isaiah 59, 1. Our Lord Jehovah Jaira able to multiply what little we have in our hands. Remember your life of faith and trust in him and display in front of your own children. Amen. You know, it's a very emotional one for me. I have to put my background in my head up. I'm preparing all my children. Mommy, Daddy have all gone through this life. The Lord has to provide us for our family. As much as he has done. Hallelujah, our Lord Jesus said, did not send them to go borrow money. Go, go, go borrow money. That's what he no, he didn't. He didn't say go borrow bread. No. He just said because he knew 
what he had planned to do for the future. Paramishir is lent with very little money. You know what will happen at the next meeting. Daily Go and read the scriptures in Matthew, Sermon on the Mount. I repeat this. I know there's a bunch of stories in every book of the Bible. I repeat these stories every time I'm in the meeting. I make a vow. Maybe 13 or 14. I'll come back to it. And ask, why must I get to this day of this meeting? Uh, they slam the door and tell me to come. Then again I go out. Again they all make a vow. Amazing. God says, I feed the sparrow. You think I won't feed you? You think it's an amazing God? No, what a wretched God we have. And, you know, the faith has to be built that way. Like man, he feeds the sparrow. He's able to feed us. But uh, we are never desperate as born-again people. As long as we acknowledge the presence of God and God. God, you are with us. We are not going to worry. We are not going to lie. Lots of illustrations I have, but I'm not able to give them. When Jesus said, make all the people sit down in batches, he gave clear orders. The disciples looked at them and said to Jesus our Lord, the day was now far spent. His disciples came to him and said, this is the deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away, that they may go into the surrounding country and villages buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Jesus telling, make them to sit down. They are telling, send them away. Opposite approach. God's approach, God's way. Let's say, your thoughts are not my thoughts. God says it. It's very difficult for a modern man to work with God in a faith basis. You know, your ideas are not my ideas. God says it. You know, your way is not my way. A very different approach. Send them away, God says, make them to sit down. Send them away, they make them sit down. This is not enough, make them to sit down. You give them something to eat. I think they were getting impatient with our Lord. The Lord Jesus wanted to give them both spiritual and physical food and got a holistic ministry application. That's why when he conducts medical mission, he gives them food. He just don't give them medicines and things to drink. That's the way we do it. Ajava Jaira is a compassionate God. Jesus is a true bread of life, just as he said, I am the bread of life. And then the text context of providing the physical food, he is the Java Jaira. At this stage, our Lord had complete command of the situation and asked all of them to sit down in an orderly form. I remember taking a picnic to a gang of church members, uh, both the church that gathered in Winston-Salem and our church here, we went on a picnic to Winston-Salem. That was when I had heard this illustration before. And we had ordered food. Uh, we, we all brought some food, and then we had ordered a little bit of food from an Indian restaurant there. And then one person stood up, and in a crystal clear voice said, Pastor, how is this food going to be enough for all these people? Because we have more than expected people coming. A lot of them came with less food or no food. I remember clearly my wife also came to say, if it happened in Wilmington Beach, I'm saying this, record it in my book. And that person, that lady, Pastor, how is this going to be enough food? Kind of looking at me, stunned and shocked. And she said, so what? Let's close our eyes and pray. I tell you, I will never forget, this all the passage I wrote to you, all men, all were fed. All didn't lack anything. This happened in Wilmington when we had our church in Winston Salem combined picnic picnic meeting. Never, not a single person had insufficient food. Enough food. A lot of miracles you can uh, attest to this, isn't it? You can attest to this. I'm not the only one to give illustrations. You all can come here and give illustration of Java Jara's provision. There's a memory, memory for this uh, church. That's one great memory uh, for me. They all were fed. They all were satisfied. We didn't lack anything on that day of picnic. And we were hungry too. There were about 5,000 men, not calculating women and children. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so. 
made them answer them. They must have looked at each other in eye contact in people, you know. Looked at each other in a gasp, in surprise. I don't know what he's up to right now. We allow the knowledge of God, wisdom of God, ability of God to supersede your own knowledge and understanding. Friends, I beg of you, my beloved in Christ. Bible says, read beyond Ephesians 3, 20, you read it, you will know. This is the secret of being a disciple of Christ. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. His grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He shall give his angel charge over me to keep me all my life. Now, do you have any doubts about his ability to provide? And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. A little while ago, five barley loaves of bread and two small fish belonged to little boys. That little fellow. I hope to be all can see him in heaven. But now we are given over to our Lord Jesus and it becomes the Lord's property. You know? That's what it is with the Lord. As long as it's in your hand, it's your property. The moment you release it in the hand of God, you, have you released your children to God? As long as you hold them as your son, your daughter, they are yours. But the moment you release them, say, God, you gave this daughter, gave this son, they are yours. Then it will be a very different story. See what God can do. You see? We are having difficulty with children. Have we handed them over to God, Christ? Boy handed over everything. It becomes the property of Jesus. Miracle happened. You hand over your son, your sister, your brother, all your, your needs to the Lord, your wife. Your sacraments will come. Hand them over. Kneel down and pray. Suddenly God will say, okay, I take this much. You remember I prayed about the Kamala's cancer of the breast, all alone in my in our bedroom, and she was not. God was really surprised. She's my daughter. Hand over to there on me, I handed over. Never became possessive of me. Are you a possessive husband? God is speaking to you. Possessive mother. God is speaking to you. Hand them over. Hand them over to the Lord. Your children, everything. God will do a better job with you. You see? It's very, very important that you do that. The moment it, he handed over to Jesus' hand, that's it. Miracle is ready. Multiplication happened. Without great fanfare, no. They were all filled. The word Greek, glutted, when we are stuffed, is used here. Fill, fill. Oh, enough, enough for a while. Eat me now. Sometimes we get eat so much, and then biryani, and then more meat, and then something nice comes along, and what has happened in our life? Oh, my God. If this has given first, now it's up to here. Where am I going to put this wonderful fellow? Why can't I make it early? As my might and my own authority. <laughs> Sometimes it's like this. Wish you had given. Can I pack it and take it home? <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? God will supply. You are full. He won't give you empty half stomach. Full, isn't it, Mrs. David? As our lady of faith. You know? He supplies over and beyond. Over and beyond. That's it. It's amazing, God. You know, our Lord gave the task of distribution, multiplied food to the disciples. Otherwise, these fellows will be only so looking at it. How in the world this happened? He said, get to work. Disciples said, get to work. Blessed are our parents who put their children to work. Get to work. Go and clean this. Go and mop this. Go and do these dishes. Don't raise princes and queenies. Yeah, <laughs> queens. I'm sorry. Apologize. Queens and princesses don't raise. Put them to task and tell them, hey, you have grown up Nathan Gerard. Come here, Mr. Nathan Gerard. Mommy is telling you to do it. Isn't it right? Avinash, go and do this. Do it. You put the disciples to work. Go distribute, fellas. Don't look at my face. And go and do some work. You know, this is it. As far as kept on taking the food, 
were coming, they just walked in, you know, in amazement and wonder, and people kept on eating. You know, the, then he said, no wasting of food. Alex Shrey was the first child in the church who started praying because the helpers started to wait. Every child picked up that cross. Isn't it right? Shrey Mantode was the first fellow who said, help us not to waste food. Who, who gets a credit? None of them. They put that food in there. They wasted food. Are your children wasting food? Java, Java, Kalani, Kalani. Don't let them. Sit down, eat it. Don't say, oh, I don't want it. You know? I, I like Shrey because they praise. They are praying. I never prayed like that. Never got that big with much. I never had a prayer for food, you know. I was a poor eater. I got the eight, nine children. I was the poorest one. Little food, nice tasty food. No, through with it. I don't want to praise this and that. It's amazing how God said, collect all the food, leftover. And you know, he would not want us to waste food. Provision never should be wasted. Becomes a conserver of the leftovers. So they gathered up fragments that remained so that nothing was lost. And cleared that our God will not have us waste food and throw away food after initially offering a prayer of thanksgiving for the food. Isn't it right? You know, waste, wasting country of food is America. John 6 13. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets. According to 12 tribes, if you look at it. The fragments of the five barley loaves, which are left over by those who have eaten. By his prayer before the food, our Lord reminded the hungry people that God is the source of all good and needful things for any life. If you are teaching your children, you have to pray for eating. You are going along with the way that Jesus said. He took the bread, he prayed to the Father. What a great way, it's exemplary way none of that could be. It's an important spiritual lesson for us. Instead of murmuring about what we do not have, we should give thanks to God for what we do have. And Jehovah Jara will bless and make it to go further. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, the church, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, not window, windows, plural, of heaven, and pour out uh, such a blessing that there will not be room enough for the food. Are you a tither? Are you a tither? If not, why not? God is speaking to you very clearly. The church is blessed because of good tithing people who tithe because they love God and they want to honor God. Jehovah Jireh provides a living bread and living water for all those who place their faith and trust in him so that we never have to go spiritually hungry or hungry. Jehovah Jireh provides love to his children. He provides his peace that passes all understanding. He gives us his joy that is not contingent on circumstances. His hope will see us through difficult days and his gift of faith will sustain us through his promises. If Jesus Christ said, Jehovah Jireh, unfailing provides young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is the sun and the shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. If your life is clear, right with the Lord, it makes sure. I, King David said, I have been young, now I'm old. I've never seen right foot. Hungry or begging for begging for food. No. I can hang up my hat on those things. Isn't it? You can. If you're serious. It's not a sentiment. It's God's a testament. I make sure. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We go in the love of Christ, in the name of Christ, looking at those poor people. You know, I see some, I would see some people, little children. You throw a toffee, you know, somebody throws a toffee can, they take the toffee case and they look at it. After some minutes, they think, where's the finger of the toffee? 
Why is Allah? If you have provided much of the room, much is given, that is your food. Much will be required. You have to be very careful how we conduct our life and the blessings and provisions that God will give us. May the Lord God continue to bless this wonderful congregation you people have. Wonderful. And that you dedicate yourself. Depending upon Jehovah Jireh for your health, for all your provision. No matter what, you are seeking for a spouse, seeking and making a child, you want a job, you want an immigration. He is a provider. He provides. And if you are lacking peace inwardly, you are without Christ. Take a moment and say, Lord, you are my provider of love and eternal life and forgiveness. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. He will do that. Provide you his presence. He will never leave you nor forsake you. What do you lack? Isn't it amazing? But may the Lord God continue to bless you, lead you, guide you, and provide for all your emotional needs. Some of you are lonely. You're going through some kind of severe depression. And God says, I'll come along with you. I'll be your friend. I'll talk to you. Isn't it? For him to tell you, he's your provider. He'll never fail you. Nor forsake you. For him to tell you, if you are without anybody loving you, he'll love you. Go to the Lord Jesus. He's your loving Father. He cares for your welfare. May the Lord God be blessed as we close our wonderful, blessed team of Jehovah Jireh. Great is thy faithfulness. What a lovely hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. May we stand to sing this glorious hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail as thou hast been. Never will be. Let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. On in thy morning, you must be silent. All I have is that I have. Great is the faithfulness, Lord and Savior. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in the courses above. Join me. In man and for witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, you must be silent. All I have is that that hand that provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord and true. For then, for sin, and the peace that endures. Lord, dear friends, and to cheer and to comfort, send for good and bright hope for tomorrow. 
Bible study is on this page. Uh, that's the, you can't get praise card, but there are those that do. I'm grateful for that. So I can still say praise and praise card. Hungry. Anyway, and uh, you can't get praise card. The elevated matter will be on in the second week of August, hopefully, when the Lord be pleased. And then it will be done in about two months, not month in this time. And also, Thank and praise God, uh, the YouTube matter is now working. If not, the other master company will take care of it. David Hartwood will take care of the matter. And we thank and praise God that uh, we're also looking at some gates to be replaced. And uh, the other day, Danny and I were talking after the video slam. One young man did a basket right at 8.35 now. Right away, stopped right away. I know he's not part of us. I just stopped him right as Danny and I were talking. Where are you going? Sir, you know this private car is going to be there. Free. 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 Same fellow I had stopped him before in Bangalore. Same guy is coming. And then he will bring his buddies here. So we have to secure this place so that there is not fight with each other and then shooting and this and that. So I'm concerned about security for our children, for our men, for our women. And that's why we want to uh, put some paint on the bridge over there. There's a big rod. We're working to put that in chain and, and then put a wall on this glass bridge on the entrance. A couple of things for security matters. When I come back, uh, I'll keep my hands on it. Because the Lord provides the means. God knows the timing to provide. We want safety for our children. You know, there are people who snatch the children and they're gone. These are highways. This way, that way. And this year turns right and left. We have to protect our children. And so I have a responsibility as a pastor to do that. We thank uh, Danny and uh, David and the Pastor Danny for the, the bylaws, the transportation matter. They've done a superb job. They're lawyers. And I believe we'll be voting it in the month of August. They have their constitution finally go through it. If you have any questions, if you have any question, answer your questions. Then in August, we'll vote it in. That, that will settle. As I said that again, it's not going to be one man show. It's going to be a deacon coming with you. So I'm not a superman here. Just an ordinary pastor. Just doing God's work. But also I have an exit gate. They come in, they take it out of this world. As long as the Lord wants me, I will be around. I will minister to the word of God. But the time will come and say, come on home. And then that mission is part of what God must say, okay, it's finished, I'm home. So the church will be run very lovely way. The days to come, that spiritual deacon 
that God has blessed you with your soul. Thank you, Daddy, for blessing your heart. And we are looking forward to the dear woman who are making tremendous sacrifices to come to Kenya. A lot of times the love of Christ is more to your needs. It's not for anything else. And they know that they are coming for a rigorous work. And we thank God. Uh, there are about seven people that gave responded for a small appeal. I didn't answer you that question. To buy a van in Kenya, used to and imported directly from Japan. Seven families quietly gave enough money for us to buy that eight passenger van called Toyota Noah. It's not available, it's only there in Japan. But likely use about 35,000 kilometers at this time. And it's getting to the harbor in the harbor in Japan. It's getting ready to be shipped. And then it will come to Mombasa Harbor and clearance, everything, and all those things. By then, it will be uh, probably late for MNC. But the uh, dealership in Nairobi has assured me, Meshak is his name. Pastor, I'm giving you a van equal in price. You'll have it. So I'm sending Ma Michael to Nairobi on the fifth night or morning, whatever he said. Pick up the van six and then go back to Kisumu. But uh, this is what is going on. So that I want to put our dear ladies, our children into that van. Then our 32 passenger van will spend lots of money in Japan and the rest. And it's different from the car and it's shorter than a Roman. And you can reach the city. I, I thank you all for your love, your prayers. And four weeks I won't be here. The Lord is here. You don't need that. The Lord is here. The church is built on the rock of ages. We just were attacked at this time. You think, how will we take care of this? A good question. Jesus said, I have godly men who can preach the gospel, even women who can preach the gospel. That's a heresy of, uh, no, a heritage of this church. So God will bring great messages from these men, and uh, I'm sure you'll be blessed. And I'll be back on the 29th of July. I'll leave with uh, Kamala on the 2nd. You know, I only want vacation. Keeps on going. Vacation is meeting people. Vacation, fun time. Go and meet people. Already rich people are telling, oh, we are ready for you. I'm enjoying that. Switch off America, so we can come here. Switch on to me. Do God says, don't switch off on Kenya. <laughs> and then switch off this place and go to India. In September, we'll go there. On the 14th, we are leaving. There is one special person here. Hold their hand. Napoleon Bonaparte. I'm just kidding. Napoleon Arukya Swami is from my native town, Kitchi. A faithful man who loves us all, isn't he? And thank you, Bilal, when you were not here. Great church. Thank you. All these church members love him. Napoleon takes good care of all of us. You know? Napoleon, our church remains very grateful. God bless you. I'm going to stop before I say that. He knows what kind of good food or bad food I <laughs> Anyway, I thank each and every one of you. Deepak, God bless you. So good to see you. Deepak is our own race in this church along with Reggie. Isn't it Deepak? What a blessing. What a blessing. God brought this Deepak back to his North Carolina. I never thought that. I only prayed. Of all the places in Greensboro, he has brought his son as a missionary in Greensboro. Deepak, you are an anointed man. You are a man of God, born again Christian. Many great things God will do through you. Every person you touch will come back and say, thank you, Pastor Deepak. Isn't it? Raised by godly parents, these two boys, raised by godly parents. Our dear Shalraj and Sunita. A lot of sacrifices. A lot of you parents need to touch them, isn't it? And that parent, mummy of yours, is a golden lady. Her prayers are most important. I know I value Sunita. Before so many came, <laughs> she was the only person I depended for decoration, isn't it? Great woman of faith and prayer and love and sacrifice. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay.
great listener. Deepak, God bless you and your dear wife and your daughter, your father, mother, and great children. I'm looking forward to many blessings in the future. I'm looking forward. God bless you. Timothy, we are all here. I'll see you in Kenya soon. But 29th, please come. And we can ask questions to those who are new. They may ask questions. And Kamala has got some clear ideas as to what her spot should be something. She's a well-planned woman. And it's nice to have an idea of where you plug it when you come. So may the Lord God bless. We are praying for God's blessings upon you. As to, I leave you in the care of the Lord in this pulpit in the eyes of the Holy God. So that this pulpit will only have men who will live their life behind the words that they speak. Very important. That's what God is going to do. May God help us to lead and guide this little church to glorious deeds of compassion and to thank God. Let's go to the throne of prayer. Thank you, O God, for this blessed day, the word of the Lord. You have enough for us. You have enough. Ephesians 3.20 we claim. Romans 8.28 is so dear. Lord God, it is, you have said in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, remember it is God who helps you to make wealth, allows you to make wealth. Lord, all that we have is from you. Accept the tithes and offerings. Use it for your glory and honor. We can never outgive you, Lord, in any measure. You are the giver of all. Bless, O oh God, our dear Deepak, his wife, O oh God, bless Reggie, Bless your family. May it always look to you for help and guidance. Thank you, O oh God. You will bless our dear our Zach and his father and mother. So lovingly have come, bringing our son all the way from Beijing. Thank you, O oh God, for others, like our dear Napoleon here. And others, Lord, who are so loving and blessed by God God. We pray, Lord, for a good trip for our Balaji to Las Vegas, giving journey mercies. Be with thy son. Thank you, Lord, for Kamala and I. We could go in your name with family. Give us, O oh God, your presence. And give others in fellowship who are coming your presence. Let them travel safe. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you did at BBS. With Gita and all that. That we got. Worked as a team. As it says now, 133. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Take care of, O oh God, this flock of yours. Help us, Lord, with the remaining part for the HCS meeting and with the matter of the elevator and with the other matter that Dan is looking into. Lord, are the gates and other matters. Lord, help us. But more than anything, give us, O oh God, a harvest of souls in this church to hire people who have not tasted Christ. Give us, Lord, the boldness to witness and share the blessings we have received Lord God, continue to bless our dear Cindy and Rajesh and Anita as they settle down. Oh God, may God give them all the blessings. Lord God, we pray for your presence to be real. Those who plan to go on vacation, be with them like Nicole had mentioned, God so will. Take care of his dad and mom and his also his partner's aunt and uncle at the farm. We commit to oh God all these loved ones to you, everyone, special people. Everyone is special. We pray for your guidance to all of us. Lead them, guide them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Heavenly Father, and the powerful, gentle presence of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Till we meet again rapidly.